So this morning, um, I'd like to share a word entitled, Being the Church. Spoo, if you can cue that guy up for us, please. Being the Church. So an observation, when, when we locked down six months ago and our meetings were no longer allowed, we were forced to rethink what church was all about. And one of our first realizations was this, if you can put it up, that our buildings may be closed, but the church is definitely not closed. Yes? Amen. Yeah. Um, and we were reminded of Jesus' powerful declaration. We found it in Matthew chapter 16, verse 18. Jesus said, I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. See, opposition and persecution have come and will come. They will continue to come. But they will not overcome the church. They haven't been able to and they won't be able to. Pandemics have come and are here. And more may come. But they will not overcome the church. They cannot. So, as we went into our lockdown... The first thing that many of us tried to do was to find new ways to do things that we couldn't do any longer. Particularly things that we did in meetings like this. And this unleashed a wave of creativity in the church. Not just here, but worldwide. And we learned new ways to do things that we used to do in our now closed buildings. So, for Lighthouse Church, we were no exception. And here's some of the things just... Um, for those of you that, that, that aren't familiar with it, we learn to do things like preach, teach, do training courses via video and using social media. We learn to pray together and to have fellowship together using WhatsApp groups. We learn to study the scriptures at home and to share what we were learning with one another, again, often in, in, in WhatsApp groups. We learn to help the needy you know, we couldn't go and help out at the feeding scheme at St. Peter's, but what we could do is that we could send funds to them and support the incredible program that they established, that uh, George and Lorenzo have established the most incredible work from St. Peter's to the needy in our city. And we were now able to have an effect in that. We were able to send them a couple of hundred copies of the Gospel of John, so that Food didn't just go out, but the gospel went out. So we were learning these new ways. We learned how to reach out using social media. And I really want to say a huge well done to, to all of us who have learned some of these new ways. You know, I know certainly for Nikki and I, um, often feeling apart, uh, it has done our hearts such good as we've seen uh, so many of you just rising up and learning these new things and uh, we've, yeah, we've really been inspired and encouraged so well done now also from this lockdown what's happened is that it's taught us more than just learning some new ways it's, it's caused many of us to rethink what church is really all about because I don't know about you but Six months ago, we just had this mold, you know, we, you're in the group, we know you go to church, you do these things. And, um, but suddenly that all stopped and we had to think, so what is church? What really matters? And here's a shift that I, I pray we'll all make in our hearts and in our minds. If we haven't done this already, if you can put it up, spook. We don't go to church. We are the church. We don't go to church, but we are the church. And, and certainly for me and for many other leaders, the lockdown showed us that we actually have a very strong focus on meetings. And many of our first questions were questions like this. How do we have a Sunday service? How do we have a prayer meeting now? How do we have small groups? 
we thought in immediately about our meetings because our meetings are very important and personally I, I was so happy every time that we learned some new ways to do these things because I love our meetings they, they, they're, they're such a key part of who we are as the church we meet because we are the church but I've been reminded and I want to share this with you this morning that our meetings are only one expression of being the church. There is so much more to being the church. So much more. So by now, I think as Lara's church family, we know two scripture texts pretty well. Acts 1.8 and Matthew 28. You know them? Okay, but we're going to read them again. If you can put them up, so we'll, so Acts 1, chapter 8. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. And Matthew chapter 28 verses 19 and 20. Go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. So we know that Jesus has given us two really, really important commands. To be his witnesses and to make disciples. He's called us to represent Jesus to others, to the people we come, and come alongside. And to help other people to become followers of Jesus, to become disciples of Jesus. So I need to say this while we joyfully celebrate our new ways of meeting online and now like restricted off in-person gatherings like this. We need to remember that our main purpose is much bigger than our meetings. Our main purpose is so much bigger. And I would be so bold as to say this, our meetings are actually held for the sake of the bigger purposes. We have meetings for the sake of our greater purpose. And let me explain why I say this. So Ephesians chapter 4, verses 11 to 16. Christ himself gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors and teachers to equip his people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. Then we will no longer be infants tossed back and forth by the waves, blown here and there by every wind of teaching and by the cunning and craftiness of people in their deceitful scheming. Instead, speaking the truth in love, we will grow to become in every respect the mature body of Him who is the head, that is, Christ. From Him the whole body, joined and held together by every supporting ligament, grows and builds itself up in love as each part does its work. As each part does its work. See, our meetings are where we worship together, we have the opportunity to enjoy gifts and expressions of worship and to enjoy the gifts such as apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors and teachers. But notice why. Why do we learn from these gifts it's in it's, it's in our text there so that we can be equipped for works of service so that we can be built up into a united body of christ so that you and i can become mature living like jesus we can become like jesus and so that each one of us will do our work this is why we do these things. So notice that these purposes are not, they're not centered around the meeting, are they? I mean, sure, some service happens here. 
And thank you so much. The leader team have been pioneering our, our, our service groups here. And if you would like to be a part of it and you want to help, um, please give me a shout because we want to start building some new service teams for our Sunday gatherings to just help us do what we do. But a lot of our service happens outside of the meeting. I would say most of our service happens outside of the meeting. And while we are built up into unity in our meetings, the United Church impacts the world outside of the meeting. And the big one for me is this, that our Jesus-like lives, as we begin to live like Christ, our lives are lived seven days a week, aren't they? And they lived mostly outside of meetings, in our homes, in our schools, in our workplaces, in our communities. This is where we get to live like Jesus. It's quite easy to look like Jesus in a meeting. But Jesus wants us to live like Him outside of that. So our meetings are where we can be equipped for the work outside of the meeting. We come into the meeting for the sake of the work that we need to do outside of those meetings. We're equipped to represent Jesus uh, in a world who desperately needs Him. And we're equipped to teach others how to become His followers. So, and uh, this is for the folk that are watching uh, offline, online, uh, whether we are able to gather in person like this or we are both or we are connecting as best as we can via video, via the internet, let's remember that our online or our in-person gatherings are not the end goal. The end goal is the ministry of the church outside of the meeting, representing Jesus and helping people to follow Him. Our end goal is to make disciples wherever Jesus will send us. I really hope this encourages those of us who are not able to gather in person. You can feel left out and uh, the work you've been called to do uh, is not limited to meetings. And Jesus wants you and all of us to, to live out your calling uh, Monday through Sunday, wherever he has you. So I'd like us to go to Acts, Acts chapter 2. This is 46 and 47. The book of Acts records the early history of the church and it starts with this beautiful picture. Here's a wonderful season of the church. Verse 46. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes. They ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who who are being saved. It's an amazing picture, isn't it? Uh, that's, that's dream church. Uh, they're, they're having lots of incredible meetings. Big meetings in the temple courts, little gatherings in their homes. God was powerfully at work. Every day people were being saved. I mean, this must have been an awesome season to be living in. But then, not long after those glory days, Persecution broke out. And what happened? Acts chapter 8, verses 1 and 4. A great persecution broke out. Broke out against the church in Jerusalem, and all except the apostles were scattered. Where were they scattered? Throughout Judea and Samaria. Can you remember what Jesus said to his disciples? Where will you be my witnesses? Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria. Those who had been scattered, what did they do? They preached the word wherever they went. Now I'm sure that these people missed those heady glory days in Jerusalem. They would have missed the meetings. They would have missed those tight connections. But they would have remembered in this difficult time, this difficult season that they've been thrust into, as we've been thrust into a difficult season, they remembered what Jesus had told them. They would be His witnesses, and they would be His, they would make disciples. And they had done this in Jerusalem, and now they began to do this 
in Judea and Samaria. And they realized they were actually fulfilling what Jesus had told them that they would do. And very soon after this, they would begin to reach out towards the ends of the earth. And friends, as we continue to read through Acts and we look at this history of the church as it grew and as it spread, we see this pattern. If you can put it up, Spoo. First, the gospel was preached and people were saved. Then, disciples were made and disciples began to gather together in fellowship together. And churches were established. The first thing that happened was the preaching of, of the gospel. The first thing that happened was people were witnesses for Christ. Then disciples were made from those new believers. Because Jesus didn't say, just make converts. He said, make disciples, make followers. Not followers of us, followers of Jesus. And this resulted in the establishment of the new churches. The, the meetings were the result of them being witnesses and making disciples. The main thing was being witnesses, making disciples, and glorious meetings followed that. Now, in our day, we often do it the other way around, or we think the other way around. We start with church meetings. We try to evangelize in church meetings. We try to make disciples in rows like this. We, we, we think that we need a church meeting first. If we need to uh, reach a, a new nation, we think, well, we need to start a church meeting. Uh, but more and more people are learning, and I, I love what Peter Rasmussen said. He said, uh, go on a gospel adventure. Go into your territory and go on a gospel adventure. Just make the gospel known wherever you are, wherever God is putting you, and see what God does. Churches result from, from that gospel adventure. So friends, Jesus said, I will build my church. And he told us to be his witnesses and to make disciples. Our job is to be witnesses for Christ and to make disciples of Christ. His job is to build his church. And you know the wonderful thing about our job, being witnesses and making disciples, is that we can do that anywhere. We can do that under the most difficult conditions. Because we don't need a meeting to do that. And... Friends, these persecuted disciples, they were refugees in strange places. But they knew what Jesus had told them to do. So they told people about Jesus and they began to make disciples. You and I may feel like we're now in a strange place. Because so many things still feel strange, don't they? But we know Jesus, and we know what Jesus has told us to do. Let's do that. Here's a, a thing that, that may surprise you, or it may just confirm what you, what you knew. Church growth researchers have recently discovered something quite remarkable. The fastest growing church at the moment. Anyone know where that is? You know, you know, I've had this conversation. Anyone know where the fastest growing church in the world is? Lynn? Iran. Iran. The persecuted church in Iran is the fastest growing church in the world. The Iranian church owns no buildings. Meeting together is difficult. It's dangerous. But they are growing exponentially. And I wonder if you can guess what their core strategy is. Any thoughts? Any ideas? Anyone want to make a guess? What's their, what's their strategy? Pray. Right? Small groups. Small groups. Small meeting. Home meeting. What's up? <laughs> so this is from one of the church leaders that they interviewed. Disciple making. Surprise! No, we're not surprised. That's what Jesus told us to do. He said, be his witnesses and make disciples. So what the Iranian church are doing is that they are very discreetly and very carefully being his witnesses and making disciples. And the church is growing exponentially. The, the Iranian church are demonstrating the truth of Scripture. 
We don't need buildings. We don't need big meetings. If we make disciples, Jesus builds his church. So friends, our, our, meeting, uh, our meeting together is something that God has ordained. This is a beautiful thing. Uh, meeting with other disciples is, is a vital expression of the church. Please hear me, I'm not saying anything negative about the meeting. The meeting is beautiful. The meeting is vital. But, so don't, don't give up. As the writer of Hebrews says, don't give up trying to meet together. Let's do all we can to meet together regularly using whatever means God has given us. Whether that's our phone or the opportunity to be in a building together, whatever it is, let's take those opportunities. But let's not forget our primary mission from Jesus. Be his witnesses and make disciples. And friends, let's recognize this, that we can do this wherever we are, even under extremely difficult circumstances. So let's do these things, friends. If you lock down and looking at this on your phone, in the difficult place you are, you can be a witness for Jesus and you can make disciples for Him. Let's do it, friends. Let's be the church. Let's do what Jesus has told us to do. And be assured of this. Jesus will do what He has said He will do. He will build this church and nothing will stop Him. Can we stand and can we pray together? Lord Jesus, you said you will build your church. The gates of hell will not prevail. You told us to be your witnesses and to make disciples. Please forgive us where we have done this the other way around. We've tried to build the church and we've hoped that you would make converts into disciples. Well, Jesus, if we've had that the wrong way around, we, we say, sorry, Lord, please forgive us. And as we hear your word this morning, we want to say, Lord Jesus, you helping us, Holy Spirit, you empowering us, we will be your witnesses. We can't do this without you, but you empowering us, we will be your witnesses and we will make disciples. And we know that as we are your witnesses and as we make disciples, Lord Jesus, you will build your church and nothing's going to stop it. So this morning we want to recommit ourselves to your program. If we had a different program this morning, we lay it down. And we say, King Jesus, we get with your program today. Build your church, Lord, for your glory. Amen.